Hey guys, I wanted to um, give you an idea of how some of our aquatic plants that we treasure in the hobby are found in nature. Uh, so I'm standing in this very muddy Hipresa, which is a sort of artificial reservoir on a farm in Mato Grosso do Sul, in Brazil. And as you can see, we've got lots of Vicornia crassipinis growing here. Um, it's very shallow, it's very muddy, and thick layer of sort of clay, silty, sludge sediment. And there are lots of aquatic macrophytes here, and they're all covered in a dense layer of silt. So, just to give you an idea, we've got a kind of, I think it's a kind of carax here. Let me focus on that, which is quite typical of the region, sort of slightly brittle. Um, brittle plant. Not very common in the hobby, but you find this in uh, across the state here. Sort of stem plant. Then we've got a very soft... Now, I need to check the literature when I get back home, because I don't have my book with me right now. But this is very fragile, soft little stem plant. Reminiscent a little bit of, of Kabomba, but it's not. It's and it's not a Carax, I think. But I will check it, see if I can find out what it is once I get back home. And that sort of grows again. You can see covered in covered in sediment and mixed in amongst the the roots networks of the Icornia. And then. What surprised me, although I've seen it regularly in the state, but here we have some sort of nondescript, brown-looking, sediment-covered plant. And if you take a piece, you give it a clean, you can see it's got these purplish tinges to it in the light. Let's see if I can focus that. Right, well, <laughs> this is Cabomba focata, originally known as Cabomba pioensis is one of the most beautiful aquarium plants around and uh, gets this lovely purple reddish colors on it and uh, I'm trying to focus on it for you guys but all right there we go um, in the aquarium it's a high light high co2 demanding plant uh, likes plenty of nutrients and here it is growing in this muddy slurry pond basically covered in sediment. Now as you can see it's not very dense growth. You can see the, the leaves are spaced out in the aquarium. These groups of the leaves will be much closer together. Nutrients in CO2 highlight. I've seen this plant growing in a lake here, Blackwater Lake, in about two meters depth. Very low light penetration but growing beautifully. Um, Again, with the spacing between the leaves quite considerable, stretched out, slightly sort of rangy looking plant. It's only in the aquarium that we get that really dense, compact looking growth in many of our stem plants. Um, but it's often surprising to people just the kind of conditions they can survive in. I don't even see this purplish colouring, but it's just lovely. Um, so they're growing in this, in this environment. The only fish I've found in here are very, very small tetras. Um, I think it's a Herpinus uh, family, possibly Serpinus notomelus. Um, and this is ideal habitat for, for fish and lots of aquatic crustaceans that I've been catching in my sieve. But I'm just always, it's always remarkable at the way that aquatic plants can survive. And showing you something else, there's quite a few lilies in here. There's some larger ones that look like Nymphaea amazonicum. There's some smaller ones that remind me of, I'm not going to pull it up, but Nymphaea gardneriana, I think. And the way you can tell is normally if the, it's rather than a bulb, it's a, I may have pulled it up. <laughs> nope, I haven't. Um, this is, come on, forgot. Um, yeah, I might just pull it up and then replant it very gently. Don't want to break it. This looks a lot like Nymphaea gardneriana to me. And this is a lily that 
produces horizontal shoots and carpets an area. This is in, in under good lighting, it's these lovely red leaves. Under lower light, green, I'm going to plant it back in the substrate, let it, let it be. So yeah, several species of aquarium plant are quite coveted, quite prized in this muddy, murky pool. Along the banks there we've got Eleocaris, SP growing. Uh, in, nearby the uh, Brillantia River here I saw quite a few Echinodorus. I may try and film those later today. But uh, yeah, so this is sort of out in the field. Well, on a farm, really. Not the wildest of places, but here are some of our most popular, most beautiful aquarium plants, just happily growing. So I don't think this is Gardneriana. The leaves are just too round, and it seems to be growing off a main stem rather than putting out runners. But isn't it just beautiful? To show you here, we have the three species growing together. So we have this Carax, brittle. Carax species here. Here we've got Cabomba ficata. And then we have this lovely soft little, I think it's actually a kind of algae rather than, a, than anything else. Um, soft little bushy, lovely little plant. Sort of almost jelly like uh, leaves. Very s sensitive. Um, and then, yeah, the I Icornia mixed in. Um, and yeah, you can see they're covered in this sort of dense layer of, of silty sediment and detritus. Obviously they have the tropical sun to help them, but even so, it's, uh, you wouldn't think it was the most ideal growing conditions, but here they are. Uh, there's some fish zipping about here and there. Various sedges, cyperus and things growing near the bank. You can see how in the margin it blends into the deeper water so you've got uh, fully aquatic plants, semi-aquatic grasses, going into woodier sort of shrub-like things, going up to terrestrial plants over there, or plants that need, like to be quite near water. A lot of these plants are used to being flooded in the rains, the water here will probably rise quite considerably, it is a drained lake, has a drainage system. Uh, but a lot of this margin will be underwater. And uh, <laughs> this looks like sort of almost a wild mint. Quite cool. Doesn't really smell like mint. I'm not going to risk tasting it. Um, so, yeah, here is the natural habitat of Cabamba ficata, amongst others. We've also got what look like a little Persicaria species here growing along in the margins and what looks like a Bacopa could be Bacopa australis even actually um, I may be completely wrong, I will check the literature um, but in a most form that's what it looks like Pontideri folia very common in this region One of the nice things about coming and messing around in these places is obviously there's lots of birds. You get to see reptiles, amphibians, there's some macaws flying over there. there snail eating kites zipping around. And every now and then you get a lovely surprise like this lovely fella here. Come on, look at you. Aren't you beautiful? I will find out from some of my herpetologist friends what this guy is. It looks like a tree frog. Except he's living in this environment, doesn't want to look me in the face. He's just... <laughs> we'll put him back. Hey, you. Should we put you back? There you go. Gone. 
risky being out this time of day in the open. Lots of birds, predators around. This is also anaconda habitat. <laughs> um, but they're more likely to just move off if they hear you coming. 